Hey everyone, I want to um, show you a cup from um, beginning. Uh, we'll maybe get to the end at some point. Um, but I want to show you, so, so far I've prepped this cup. I sanded it with um, a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. And I washed it. And now I'm getting ready to use the um, Universal White on it from Crystal Egg. So the this will be my my primer. And so I'm just gonna brush it on. I'm not too concerned with streaks and whatnot because this is um, gonna get glittered over anyways. So um, I'm basically just doing this coat to give all my other layers of things um, something to cling to. And this right here is probably the best primer I have ever used on a cup. You can, um, if you ever have to strip a cup and you have this on there, this stuff is almost impossible to strip off your cup. That's how strong of a hold it has. So that's why it's awesome as a, as a primer. Or just as a base coat. Um... This brush is kind of stiff, but that's okay. You won't be able to see any of these streaks once I'm finished with the cup anyways. And this dries pretty quickly. And then I'll do the bottom. All of my small footballs are occupied, so I'm having to use something a little bit bigger, and it's kind of driving me crazy up here at the top. <laughs> okay, so this will dry super fast, and um, while that's drying, I'm going to make a color with the pigments. First, I'm going to close this so I don't spill it everywhere. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, make a turquoise color using um, the silver metallic and uh, some of the uh, Craftnik pigments. And I'm going to hopefully make it as close to a turquoise as I possibly can. Um, I think I'm just going to pour a little bit of this into here. I kind of want just a little bit of shimmer. You may not be able to see in the end anyways because I'm going to be putting glitter over it, but you never know. So I'm just going to... I'm going to wing it and see how it goes. Alright, so first I'm going to start with the uh, number four, which is the green pigment. And I'm just going to put a couple... And actually, I think I might just add just a tiny bit of the bright tone just to make it a little more liquidier. Okay. So right now, between bright tone and the metallic, I'm probably up to maybe five milliliters. I'm going to do... I'm going to start with two drops. Okay, we'll go three. Um, three drops of the green. I'm just winging this. I don't have my... Um, cheat sheet and I'm gonna do one wait, two two drops of the blue which is the number five and I'm gonna stir that up and see what we come out with 
Okay, that was almost perfect. <laughs> It's hard to tell. This right here is pretty much dry, so I'm just going to go ahead and add it onto here. Um, after I get this. Yeah, that was about perfect color wise. Okay, so this is dry. And so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to paint this on to my cup. This brush just came out of water, so I'm just drying it off. Oh yeah, I don't think I could have gotten it any more, <laughs> any more perfect. I love when you wing things and it just, just does what you want it to do. I'm going to do the bottom real quick so that way I can clean up the edges if I need to. Alright. I'm going to try to keep it from puddling up at the top. And again, I'm not too terribly worried about streaks because it's going to be covered up with, with glitter anyways. Do you see that? That is pretty dang close to my glitter color. <laughs> um, so this was just a little bit of silver metallic, um, a tiny bit of bright tone just to thin it out a little bit, and I did three drops of the green pigment and two drops of the blue pigment. And came out with this really pretty shimmery turquoise. Okay, so make sure I got all the white covered. I always do a, a base coat as close to my glitter as possible, um, especially with chunky glitters because if, um, if there's any gaps between the chunks of glitter, you'll see this color rather than a white color. So I'm gonna let this dry for a minute and then I'll come back and we'll add glitter. Okay, I'm back and um, this is dry, so now we're going to apply the glitter. I did find, um, I think I showed earlier, this is the glitter I'll be applying, which is a medium chunky. And I was out going through all my other glitters and I found a couple other ones that are, this one's, um, I don't know, it's not, it's not quite a medium chunky. This one right here is more of a fine glitter and so I think I'm just going to mix them um, together and see how it goes. So I'm just going to do a little bit of each one in here. Basically I want enough to cover my cup and that's it. So just a little bit of that one and I want, I want uh, more of this one than anything else. So And the colors are just a tad bit different, but that's okay. They're all kind of like in the same, in the same family. Perfect. Adding the, um, adding a finer glitter to your chunky glitter will help uh, fill in any um, holes between the chunky glitters. Uh, so that's why I'm doing this. And that way you don't have to do so many coats of so many coats of glitter. I I try to stick to just one. Okay, so that right there looks about 
perfect to me. So I'm going to apply my bright tone to my cup. And I'll probably maybe stand up. I don't know. I'm going to try to do this without. Let's see. Um, whenever I'm uh, doing bright tone on the cup to apply glitter to, I put it on just a tad bit thicker than I normally would. Because um, that will allow me a little more time to work and get my glitter on it before it dries. So I'm going to get just a little bit thicker. Don't put it on so thick that it's dripping. Just get it on the cup and make sure it's a little bit thicker than your normal coats. And then don't forget the bottom. Make sure you get it all over. That's probably enough. Okie dokie. So now I'm going to apply the glitter. I have a piece of paper here to catch the excess. And here we go. I start at the top and I just sprinkle. And I just work my way down the cup. I don't want to pour it on because when I pour it on, the t uh, glitter tends to stack on top of each other, which makes it pretty difficult to um, cover with bright tone later. Sometimes I can get a little bit heavy handed with it, but that's usually just on accident. And I'll just go all the way down the cup, and then if I see any holes, I'll go back to them. Whoop, that was a lot. And then I'll take my cup off to do the bottom. Okay, I'm going to put some of this excess back in my little cup so I'll have more to work with. I'm going to tap it. You'll see some fall off, which is, which is good. You don't want any extra on there. You want it to be pretty uh, minimal. So now I'm just going back in and filling up some holes that I see. Okay, so I'm going to take it off so I can do um, the bottom. Sometimes I'll just give it a little shake to get any excess off. And then I'll let this spin for about five minutes. And then I'm going to tap down the glitter just to make sure everything is laying flat. I don't want anything sticking up. If you have glitter sticking up, then it's going to be um, difficult to get everything covered with your bright tone in just a few layers. Normally I can get a chunky glitter cup completely covered in, and I posted one yesterday, it was about four coats. And um, I mean I'm not going to stop at the four coats, but it was quite glossy after the four coats. And that's your goal. The flatter your glitter is, the better. 
the less you have to sand, the less coats you have to use. Okay, so um, instead of waiting five minutes, I'm just gonna go ahead and start tapping this down now. Um, so that way you can see the whole process. So I normally start it at one end or the other and I just tap it as it spins. And I'll just stay in one area of the cup so that way I know that I go all the way around in that area. And you'll have some fall off, that's fine. Because my base coat is the color of my glitter. I'm I'm not concerned with uh, uh, bald spots, I guess you could say, because my base coat helps disguise those, I guess you can say. I don't know if you can tell the difference. See how this right here, everything's like standing up still and it's um, getting pretty flat down here. So this is my, this is the easiest way for me to do it. Also do the edges because those are the worst to cover if anything's standing up and I'll do the bottom just make sure you get it all the way around and then once um, this dries completely so I'll give it a few hours I will um, go through again and knock off any excess glitter and I'll tap it down again um, while it's dry just to I don't want any any glitters that are not going to cooperate on here I want everything to be totally flat okay so that's all there is to it I'll um, come back again later whenever I go to add on my next coat of bright tone just so you can see um, I know some people have issues getting the bright tone on here without making your glitter look clumpy. So I'm going to show you how I do it so your glitter doesn't look clumpy. Okay, see you later. Okay, I'm back really fast. I'm going to show you um, next steps. This is dry since I added the glitter. So now I'm just going to take a dry paintbrush and lightly brush over it to get off any excess glitter. We don't need the excess. It's... Uh, super shiny anyways the way you know even after you brush them off it's still going to stay super shiny i could do the bottom as well and actually a whole lot doesn't fall off usually just a little bit and that's totally fine with me okay so now that i have that i'm going to put this excess in back into my little glitter container and then i'm going to show you um how i apply my bright tone on here um, without it looking um, clumpy. So I'm gonna put a, a hefty drop of bright tone here and I'm gonna wipe it. The thing is I don't want to I don't want to take this brush and wipe it dry. So if that makes sense. I'm gonna have this turn the other way and I'm gonna put a bunch on here and just hold my brush here until it goes all the way around. And I'll just keep adding drops here and there until I get as much on there as I want. And then I'm going to add some more and just brush it downwards. I don't know if you can see how much I'm adding on here, but it's probably about a pea size amount every few turns. And I'm going to go down here and do it again. A lot of this glitter is going to soak up the bright tone. So... Um, my first layer bright tone after the glitter is usually a little bit more than normal so um, once I get it full you'll see I have quite a bit on my brush just from brushing it down I'll use that excess to do the bottom so brushing it down so you got some there just gonna put it on the bottom um, if, you like, if you feel like you ever have too much or you're seeing bubbles on your cup, just take the excess and wipe it onto a paper towel. That way you're not getting a build up with all those bubbles. So I've got some bubbles down here on the bottom from where I put too much.
Okay. I think I've got it all, all on there now. All right, so that's it. It's already super shiny with just that one layer of bright tone. So I hope that helps someone um, figure out colors, mixing colors with the with all the Crystal products and um, basically start to finish. Hey everyone, I am finally finished with the cup. Um, here it is. Um, I think I did probably about five layers of bright tone on here before I put the decals on. And then um, I have a layered decal so you can see the silver holographic behind the black on the words. And then this unicorn was quite interesting because it was, I printed it on printable vinyl, but I printed it on the wrong side and I'm too cheap to reprint. So I just ended up using the paper side of it and I uh, glued it on and then I wrapped, I put like a, a rubber band around it to hold it down while it dried and it laid down flat uh, perfectly. So um, I can't feel it at all on here which is surprising since the paper backing is usually kind of thick. Um, but I think I probably did four coats of bright tone on top of the decal. So um, it turned out really good. I'm just going to clean up the rim real quick because um, I have to um, I have to deliver this this week. It's been done for a few days now. It's just been over here drying. Um, so whenever I clean the rim, I just... I just clean this very top edge up here. I don't do anything on the outside here, just on the inside. Um, luckily, I didn't get any paint or anything on the inside, so I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and then I'm just going to lightly go around the rim here, and just in case there was any bright tone that leaked over the edge, um, this will get it off. So. Um, so that's what I do for cleaning the rim and this one's actually pretty clean it's probably the cleanest rim I've ever had and then I will take it inside and wash it um, and then uh, I'll wash it before I deliver it so um, this is a one of those little kids cups from from Walmart I love these these don't leak um, it has a lid, but if, or a straw. If you take a straw out, you just close this thing, and it doesn't leak. My daughter has one, and it has been all over my car with milk in it, and it doesn't leak. So, anyways, that's the end of this cup, and um, as you can see, it's completely smooth, even with the glitter on there, and all these um, decals with the paper decal and layered decals. So. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope you uh, test out tinting your your universal white and doing all that stuff um, instead of using spray paint. It's so much faster and you can come up with some really cool colors. So um, if you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook at um, Lacey Designs N-O-C-O. -O. So um, if you have any questions, you can find me there. Talk to you later. Bye.